Cut to a few sessions in, the DM started getting a little bit overly familiar. I tried to keep things light and friendly, but he eventually asked me out. Oh, this went to a place I did not think it was going to go. Wait, 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 wait. This video is sponsored by Raycon, the high quality earbuds that are half the price of other brands, ergonomic, comfortable, and with their new upgraded model, Active Noise Cancellation. Yeah! The upgraded everyday earbuds are just like the old Raycons, but now they are much more ergonomic and they have a new feature called multi-point connectivity that lets you pair with two devices at once. And look at all the variety and colors, like this Galaxy design, which I really like. Raycon earbuds have tons of options, variety, and features that work seamlessly with your devices. I like things being easy and Raycons do just that. The time that I'm using these the most is when I'm trying to go to sleep and because I have tiny, tiny little ears, the new everyday earbuds fit perfectly and don't hurt and they're super comfortable and uh, uh, honestly, super worth it. I see. <laughs> no, Head to buyraycon.com slash fireballs to get 15% off your Raycon's purchase plus free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash fireballs to get 15% off your Raycon purchase plus free shipping. There is a link down below. So I am not one to scroll subreddits like r slash dnd horror stories. No, I get my reddit stories the way God intended. On TikTok with Minecraft jumping videos and an AI voice. Or Shane Top. Today I thought it'd be fun to be Crit Crab and bring some contemporary YouTube back into the reddit story scene. I haven't read any of these stories before. I did skim them just to make sure, but I'm going in pretty blind. So let's just see what we find here. I'm sure everything will be fine. DM railroaded us into a trap, then killed slash enslaved our whole party. Maybe it's not fine. Maybe, maybe everything will not be okay. I got word last minute that it was going to be our last session since two people were leaving the group. Okay, so the, it's a group and two people are going to leave, so it's going to be the last session. Okay. All right, whatever, says I, kind of done with this group anyways. DM railroads your every decision, so the last session has us working for some shady necromancer guy who wants us to enter some equally shady underground building to protect him while his father undergoes surgery. What? What? So the last session has us working for some shady necromancer. Okay, so uh, just to kind of pile all my clues together here, there are two people who are leaving this campaign, so it's going to be their last game, and the person writing this story is like, whatever, fine, this game is super railroady anyways, and I don't really want to play it. All right. Oh, there's birds outside my window. They have a, they have a nest. I don't know if you can hear it. but there are baby birds. I also love this necromancer being like, hey, can you help me out? My dad's going into surgery. It's, I, can you can you go down here and go to this shady building while my dad has surgery? I'm a lawful evil fighter. I don't trust anybody or anything. I don't know. I think Tylen, <laughs> I don't know. I think Tywin Lannister almost. I tell everyone in my group, I don't like the look of this place. I think we should back out. Man, I am tearing this apart. This is so funny. I love the idea that they're like, yeah, whatever. It's this last game in this group. But like, I'm playing like Tywin Lannister, basically. My character's basically like, uh, just like lawful evil. Think like um, Tywin Lannister. Do not base your D&D character off of Tywin Lannister. That is, what kind of fun are you trying to have? Yeah, with my D&D character, I really just want to abuse my family. That's my character trait. <laughs> but again, this DM just railroads me. Basically makes me enter this building. Anyways, there are hordes of skeletons attacking, but I refrain from fighting for the most part and stay near the nearest exit. Lo and behold, after a Boss fight. The DM says that we're surrounded. The necromancer dude has betrayed us. We are taken in as slaves. That's it. That's the end of the campaign. My character was right all along. Can't I run? I'm in hiding. I'm near the exit to this tomb thing. Nope. Worst campaign I've ever been a part of. Okay, we're not getting a lot of details here, so that makes me think a lot of things. First of all, we're not hearing a lot from the player side of things. I, uh, just from this cursory glance of what's going on here, the player is a red flag to me because they aren't, you can boil down 
every bad D&D thing in any game to being like, oh, they just didn't communicate. So prepare to hear a lot of that. But basically what has happened here and what I'm getting from this player is that they aren't communicating with their DM and the DM has either not properly communicated to them that like, hey, this is the last session and this is where I want you guys to go and what I want you to do. And to me, the vibe I'm getting off of this is that the player is like, nope. I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. I know it's the last game, but I'm going to intentionally stand in the corner to not get railroaded. I know it's bad to railroad and I understand, but like this dude admitted to playing a lawful evil fighter who doesn't trust anybody. If I was the DM, I would have tried to come up with a way to get this lawful evil fighter involved in the plot so that they would have more of a reason to go down into the basement and fight the skeletons and help the necromancer. There's just a lot of details missing. However, if I was the DM in this situation, I don't, I don't know why this is the last session. If it's the last session, wouldn't you want to like go out on a bang or something? Why are you going out with the party getting enslaved? It comes off to me like the DM has plans for a future campaign and they wanted to come off really cool. Or maybe the DM wanted to come off like, haha, I've trapped all your characters and this is why you're not adventuring anymore. But why go for this ending? So strange. I, I really wish I had more details on this one, but I, I think the player and the DM are both being stubborn at each other and going, mm -mm, I'm not, no, no, I'm doing it my way. No, I'm doing it my way. Both of them should have come together and been like, hey, it's the last session. Let's like make the best out of it. What do you want to do, DM? Okay, cool. I want to do this with my character. Is that so hard? I don't want to read comments, but nope, we're not enslaved. Five minutes after the game ends, we bust out and kill the skeletons. That doesn't happen. You don't get that say you're not the DM anymore. Epic Reddit moment. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm never, I'm never going to give these comments the, the benefit of the doubt. Ooh, ooh, you, you've just pulled one over on the DM. <laughs> Could you imagine if they were like kind of friends and like that would have started a worse argument? Like I get what this comment's trying to say. It's basically saying they're not the DM anymore. This is the end of the campaign. You can do whatever you want, but I don't know if it's like the DM's world and they are maybe running another campaign with it in the future. They do have the final say in whatever happens. That sucks. I don't agree with it. I think it's stupid and I think it's dumb, but this is the social contract that we sign when we play games like this. That doesn't mean what the DM is doing is right. They should have consulted the players to make sure this is something that they wanted to do because now they're going to walk away from this being like, this sucks and I don't want to play in a game of yours ever again. Lol, you couldn't even roll to hide or try to escape. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I don't know if it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I've definitely ruled that before. I've ruled scenes where it's just impossible to hide or leave. Like, I like to put my players in situations like this, but whenever it's an impossible situation like this, where I'm like, when your characters enter this area, it is impossible for you to leave. It's not, you will have to fight. It's me saying, I want you to fight this because I've prepared this for the story. And I like to say that before we start our game, I'll be like, guys, there is a point in this game where you will be trapped in an area and you will have to fight these creatures. And most of the time my players are like, yeah, sounds good. And then if anybody's like, okay, why can I know why? And I'll be like, all right, sure. I'll explain it to you. It's fine. I don't think you lose anything from not communicating that to your players. <sighs> it's a game guys. Nope. Even though my character was incredulous the entire time, there was even a part towards the beginning of the fight where this clearly evil necromancer guy was like, accept my sacred blessing. I refused it on the grounds that I don't trust him. Even that didn't lead to anything. I'm just mind controlled and my character dies. Apparently a character I've been playing across campaigns for a decade now. That's crazy that. Yeah. I mean, I, the more details I get, the more it seems like the DM was just really wanting to have this very specific gotcha ending which is just weird and dumb and don't do that. If it is the last game of your campaign and you want it to be cool and epic and fun, just tell your players they'll want it to be cool and epic and fun too. Did I miss a page or did the DM instantly make you lose the game? Yeah, this is what I'm saying. End of the campaign, but yeah, essentially no matter what, everyone lost. The happy ending is your group is free to tr find a non-terrible DM, rip. Well, I guess you got what you wanted. You were playing Tywin Lannister from Game of Thrones. You know, Game of Thrones, notorious good ending show. Notorious for all of its characters getting a good ending that's satisfying. All right, next one. DM Hates Players is a huge ass with rules. Very recent. Ran a campaign with two GMs and God, oh, two, two, not nah, two GMs. I'm sorry, if you have two GMs out there and it's fun, great, but I've only had bad experiences with it. Ran a campaign with two GMs and God damn, this was the worst GM I've seen in so long and one GM was absolute dog.
So first warning signs, the GM power trips like all hell. They refer to themselves as the god of the game. And when they're told a rule that works in the scenario or explained how certain things work, they get mad and make their own rule out of nowhere. For the record, this GM was horrible with the rules to the point where they didn't even know what a saving throw was. Despite this not being their first campaign, it happened a lot. Okay, a second warning sign, the GM is super controlling, there are so many examples to names, so I'll just go through notable ones. Had characters' entire fates planned out, including unavoidable death. Whoa. Commonly took over as god and had the party go places they wanted them to go by force, despite lack of planning. Forced people to RP exactly how they wanted, revealing character details to party, using character's voice, never speaking out of character, etc. Okay, that, that one's a little weird. Chose to not allow players to pick their race or class upon death? Yes, this isn't even a joke. What does that even mean? Not to allow players to pick their race or class upon death? So when they died and had to make a new character, the DM picked what they played? Yes, this is even a joke. If a character died, the DM would make them a new one. Oh, God. When this was revealed and players requested races, they went as far as to tell them they'd to ex the ex exact opposite. What? I think I don't know what this sentence is trying to say, but I think it's I think it's trying to say when this was revealed and players requested races, they went as far as to tell them to expect the exact opposite. Nerfed abilities and spells on the spot if it did something they didn't want it to. For example, telepathic speech being noticed by anyone with a semblance of magic talent. Detect magic not finding schools of magic. I kind of get that one. It can get kind of annoying. You can sense that this door is magical. Okay, what kind of magic? Man, I don't know. Door magic! Create water just not being allowed to be used. <laughs> Dissonant Whispers doing less damage than a single spear stab. A rolled max damage on two guards while twinning it, neither died, and more. All right. I mean, sometimes that happens. Dice rolls are mean, but I mean... Third warning sign. Demanded players have certain IRL items and such. No digital dice allowed. No online sheets allowed. You had to have... Candles for ambience. You had to have a webcam, etc. Oh, Wait. This is playing online? I was about to be like, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with having candles for ambience? I mean, I get not wanting to have digital dice or online sheets. I feel like not having digital dice is understandable because they're just, there's a lot of conspiracy about dice and some DMs do prefer physical dice. Totally understand that. So long as you provide the dice. If the player doesn't have dice and they don't wanna buy it, then provide dice because online dice is free. You can go on google.com and roll free dice. If you don't want people to use stuff like D&D Beyond or online character sheets, then prepare to provide them. But also that can be a little bit of an accessibility thing. Some people have a much easier time with online character sheets. And if that's like a no-go going out, I think you should really think about what is important to you about that. From my understanding, a lot of DMs like to enforce this rule as a way to force their players to learn the game the way it was meant to be learned. And while that is understandable, Understandable. I think this is something you should bring up to your players as an option, saying, hey, I would prefer if we used real character sheets instead of online character sheets for XXX reasons. And if your players are like, yeah, okay, that's fine, cool. And if somebody's like, I don't really want to do that, here's why, maybe try to accommodate for them. But this is weird. Uh, this is an online game. I don't how know how you get away from that on an online game, because if you're online and you're not using digital dice or digital character sheets, then you can just make up whatever you want. I mean, I get it. I totally understand just having trust in your friends and your players and going through with that. Totally fine. And having candles for ambience. If I'm understanding correctly, which I, I wish people would put more detail into this than they are here. They're just kind of throwing out lines. But was your DM making you light candles on a Zoom call or a Discord call during the game? Unless you're playing 10 candles, this is whack. You had to have a webcam, etc. I mean, that one too, I kind of understand if there are people who really go back and forth with that. Personally, I don't really mind, but I have been in games before where it was important to me that everybody did have a webcam and that's, I don't know. I don't think that's that bad of a thing, but forcing everybody to light candles. Last warning sign, a deep hatred for spellcasters. Oh, last warning sign, thank you. In case we ever come across this person in the wild. Last warning sign, a deep hatred for spellcasters. Wizards could only pick spells from their school. Wait, what? Like if you were playing a divination wizard, you could only take divination spells? 
Spells within melee range proct opportunity attacks. Oh, yeah, the classes that have the least amount of hit points. Great idea. Pretty much every area could entirely negate magic. Prison had anti-magic. Entire most of major city was anti-magic. The one disease sped up when magic was used. There's a disease, apparently. And these were all back-to-back -back plot points. But when their magic NPCs used it, they could do pretty much anything with ease, despite being like a random herbalist in a random town in the desert. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it before. Having anti-magic in your game sucks. There's a way you can do it with certain puzzles, like I think to the section in Baldur's Gate 3, which by the way is a video game, so don't take it for D&D advice. But like the area with the Susur Flower and the Arcane Tower, where you need to have, you have a pocket of anti-magic that you're using to power the tower. You don't want to be in the area of anti-magic because anti-magic sucks and is bad and takes away portions of your character and how they can interact with the game, like major aspects. So it's used as like a, oh, this is a challenge that you have to overcome. Do not use anti-magic as like, all right, globally, this area is anti-magic. You, you just can't play half of your character, not even half of your character, more than half of your character, unless there's a way, an easy way for the characters to understand cover and halt the anti-magic in some way. Having areas in your TTRPG that take away mass portions of a character's ability to interact with the game itself uh, does not feel good. I'm not even going to say it's bad. It just feels bad. Sitting at the table being like, okay, cool. I can't do anything. You can make challenges and be like, no, you can't cast that spell here because of this, but here's the workaround and you, this is a challenge you have to overcome. Fine. But just taking it away and being like, screw you, you can't do that. That sucks. None of these things were established prior to the campaign. There, there it is. That's, that's the problem. And the majority of the players were brand new to D and D. This was their introduction to the game. Like my first DM wasn't a shining example, but at least he had good grips on the rules. And this DM is just horrible. I feel so bad for the other players. All right. TLDR extreme railroading extreme stubborn bad understanding of rules super controlling and rude dm i don't know you didn't really explain how they're stubborn or how they're super controlling you just kind of listed things that they do so it would be cool to hear more anecdotes but we'll take what we can get i kind of like the idea of limiting wizard spells to their specific school like 75 percent or something but holy shit, not like this the entire rest of the list like that is wild it's a good idea for a certain campaign that players know about in advance so they can opt into it agree if i were to implement this i'd be clear that you can copy spells from other wizard spell books so rival wizards would be real rivals with each wizard seeing them as a prime way of growing their own power. Probably a solid idea for all wizard campaign, but you can't throw that on players mid game. Yet the way you do that, if you want to motivate your players into doing something with their character, you motivate them to do that by positive reinforcement instead of negative reinforcement. Don't take away something that they can do. Don't say, I'm going to make it so you can't cast these spells. You should make it so it's easier to cast those spells. The game already does this with divination wizards or abjuration wizards having an easier time copying those spells into their spell book. It's less gold and it takes less time. You can go a further step by this and make it so that maybe they can modify those spells a little bit easier or even make it cheaper to put into their spell book. Or maybe they can cast one of them for free once per day. That really motivates your player to cast those spells because they're better. They're easier to cast. When you look at that spell list of what you can take, you're going to look at divination and go, oh, but it's a divination spell. I should take that because my DM is making it easier for me. Instead of being like, okay, I just can't cast these other spells. While I agree that this big list of terrible things is bad, uh, I wish there was more details as to what exactly was going on here. But uh, yeah, a lot of those things are not good. Worst game ever. I hope this is okay to post here because the game in question was actually Masquerade, not D&D, but the experience is universally infuriating, I think. I've never played Vampire the Masquerade, but I've heard it's very cool, so we'll see how this translates. I was playing a campaign with a group I didn't know that well. Acquaintances, but none who would I call a friend. Not super relevant, but it made the whole thing extra awkward. So my character had a trait called Displaced Heart. My heart was located somewhere else in my body, not its usual location. This was a secret from the rest of the party, and I had to take a pretty serious flaw in order to balance it out. I was pretty proud that I had been playing with my flaw fairly well and no one else was suspicious about anything being out of the ordinary. I was very excited to see when and how it would play out in game. Yeah, my big character secret is that I don't have my gallbladder. <laughs> I've been hiding it very well. They don't know yet, but I'm starting to suspect they don't realize my gallbladder is in my 
But cut to a few sessions in, the DM started getting a little bit overly familiar. I tried to keep things light and friendly, but he eventually asked me out. Oh, this went to a place I did not think it was going to go. Wait, 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 wait. I thought we were joking about funny hearts, not the, oh God. Cut to a few sessions in, the DM's getting over familiar. He asked me out and I had to politely tell him I wasn't interested in him like that. It was uncomfortable, but I really thought everything was fine. The very next session, one of our party members betrayed us and attacked me. He stabbed my character in the chest. What? 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 Unless I don't understand Vampire the Masquerade and this is like a normal thing you do in that game. It's like a mechanic of some kind. It's fun and everybody does it all the time. What? This? Why would you attack another party member? This was the moment I was waiting for. Stab me in the gallbladder, I've been waiting! I immediately started planning my next move, but before I had a chance to react, the DM just sighed and announced to the confused party that I had a displaced heart. I was oh, Dang it. This sucks. <laughs> this sucks. I was floored and I couldn't believe he just announced it like that. He justified it by saying they were going to find out eventually he was just saving time. Yeah, time I could have used to my advantage. Mm. Nothing can convince me he didn't do it out of retribution for turning him down. I know it's such a silly, petty thing, but it really soured me towards gaming and I'm a little salty about it 20 years later. Anyways, that's my story. Not the juiciest I know, but thanks for letting me get it off my chest. I'm sorry, not the juiciest, this was crazy. Unfortunately, I don't have much to add here. That that just sucks. I can't, I, I, wow, I, I don't, just, oh my God. I mean, okay, I've had this happen before to me as a DM where it, very early on when I was first DMing, like I'm talking game three of me DMing. I was also pretty young too, I was like 17 or 18. I was DMing and my player was playing a, like my player was playing a subtype of class that you could have in 3.5. It was called Assassin and he really wanted to keep it secret, but the abilities that he was using were abilities from that class. So a uh, Colton who was also playing in this game just kind of figured out that he was an assassin because he was playing one and he was using abilities like death strike and was like, Oh, you're playing an assassin. And I basically went, yeah, because I didn't want to lie anymore. I was just like, yeah, yeah, that's what he's playing. Like for me, it was like, I, it wasn't that I was trying to ruin his character. It was that I was just, not wanting to gaslight my players and there was no preconceived contract about it. I was just like, oh yeah, that'd be cool. Let's keep it secret. And then I was just like, I mean, he figured it out and he got really mad and left. Like he was just super upset and like told me I was terrible and then left and it was dumb. And while it sucks that he did that, I know that what I did wrong was that like, I didn't properly like communicate. We didn't really figure out like a good system as to how to keep it secret. I could have also taken Colton aside and been like, Hey man, we're like trying to keep this secret. And he would have probably been like, Oh yeah, sure. For real. And this is very clearly out of spite. Like the DM knows that this is an important part of the character. I knew that when I did that and I was pretty young and stupid and I just didn't want to lie anymore. I don't think that's the case for this person because they have been keeping it up for a long time. In my example, it had been two games, like genuinely the second game. It, it was not like this long spanning campaign or anything like that. Taking away a character's thing like that really sucks. That's really unfortunate that that happened to this person and especially because it had something to do with out of game and, and that just really sucks. Off my chest, you mean out of your chest? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh gosh darn darn it that reddit sure do be funny i do love me some reddit humor i see what you did there that's actually a great response ha, yeah uh-huh why is that 14 upvotes? I'd be pissed too. Vampire the Masquerade is all about social maneuvering. You could have played dead, listened to their conversation, and you used it to their advantage, but you have gone underground and pretended to be dead and plotted. I'm really mad on your behalf. Damn, that really sucks. Welcome to the friend zone. Or guys could just, I don't know, grow up. You should just leave the group if you can't handle it. Incel strike again. <laughs> Men are so normal on the internet. I love that so much. Well, this was fun. Um, I, you know, I think we learned a lot today. Do you feel like you've learned a lot today?
Let me know if this format is fun. I, I'm not sure. Maybe we can do a uh, submitting horror stories. I think that would be a lot of fun. Maybe we could do it in like Discord or something. I think that would be also a great time. But anyways, communicate with your players and your DM. It's always going to be the answer to, to situations like this. I need to really have like an intro. I need it. Can we have a, let's do a build up intro. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to be more positive here on XP to level three. Communicate with your players and see you guys in the next one.